Look, uh, I'm not here to you know say we take any solace in 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 a loss. That's not why I'm here at LSU to 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 learn about uh, great lessons in in losses. Uh, but the reality of it is, um, we've got some some learning to do. Um, we've got to coach better and we've got to play better. All right, let's talk about what they need to do better. And I will start with the mouth of the SEC himself, Paul Feinbaum. I, 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 I'm not even sure I understood what Coach Kelly was talking about there. No one thought he went to LSU to learn lessons. What's your number one takeaway <laughs> from last night? LSU paid $10 million for that, Greeny. That, that's, that's what, that was my takeaway uh, at midnight last night because it makes perfect sense to go for two. He just went 99 yards. It was a perfect executed drive and Florida State's defense is forget on its heels. I mean, they're on their back. Uh, and do you want to keep playing uh, when you've played that poorly? No. You, and you don't want to put it in the hands of the special teams because you've already had two uh, muff punts. You've had uh, a blocked field goal. Of course you go for two. I, I think it's the simplest call in the world. But Brian Kelly being somewhat conservative, he immediately put up the one. Brian, you're not in the NFL. This is college football. Put the dagger in. What did you think of it, Heather? Going for the two there, I have to admit I agree with Paul. The way Sometimes you have to judge these things based on the way the game is going, and he has all the momentum in the world moving right down the field. What did you think of the decision? Well, I think whether you go for it or not, the bottom line is nobody at LSU should be surprised by this, Greeny, because anyone who paid attention to Brian Kelly last year, this was deja vu. When he was head coach at Notre Dame, he struggled against Florida State in the season opener the exact same way. Notre Dame was lucky to beat Florida State in an overtime last year. Mm. And guess what? In similar fashion, he blamed his players at halftime. So can they learn from those mistakes? We'll find out. Yeah, it, it, it did not seem to have been his fault. What did you think of the decision? Yeah, I'm okay with going for one. You have the momentum, right? You have the momentum. You kicked the extra point. Now, the issue is this. There was a field goal that was blocked earlier. And so if you know you have a porous line when it comes to blocking field goals, that's when the question lies. But still, you have the momentum. You kick the extra point. You, it's a, you know, 90% of the time, 95% of the time you're making that. Make the extra point. You have momentum going in overtime. Obviously, this decision backfired. Yeah, and, and listen, I mean, at the end of the day, maybe the decision not to go for the two if you disagree with it masks a lot of the other stuff. It didn't look so good last night. It's worth reminding everyone this is not the championship LSU team from two years ago that he's taking over. It's a team with far lower expectations, but that's not a great start for them. Meanwhile, let's go around what was an unbelievable weekend. Heather, we've got headlines. Let's start with Georgia and Alabama. What did you think? Greeny, I thought that those two teams did exactly what they were supposed to do. They dominated lesser competition, and these two teams are going to be in the college football playoff. Go ahead and pencil it in. One of the most impressive things was Stetson Bennett. He's the first Georgia player in the last 25 years to have an 80% completion percentage. Ugly ducks, okay? And, <laughs> yeah, and when you say lesser competition, that's Oregon they're playing. That's supposed to be a game, I thought. It was kind of a not even close it to a game. a game. No, not even close. And then number two in the headlines was Ohio State. To me, do not give up on these guys. They're still one of the top four teams in the country. Defensively, they held them to zero points and 72 total yards in the second half. C.J. Stroud, eight of nine completions. When they needed to be on, they were on in that fourth quarter. And then let's go to the Irish side of things because I'm not counting them out of the college football playoff race either, guys. I think Marcus Freeman deserves a lot of credit. I was in that stadium. LeBron James was there, 106,000 people. They go in there, and they did what they did defensively and had the lead in the first half. Are you kidding me? We're going to keep talking about those guys if they learn to finish these games. Well, so when I made this point last week, Paul, and, and again, like most geniuses, I'm, I'm usually not fully appreciated until after my time, but this time I had it right immediately. There was such a thing as a moral victory for the Irish on Saturday night, and I thought they got it. What did you think? I think they came close to it. I mean, Greeny, they did the most important thing, apparently, in Notre, at Notre Dame these days. Cover the spread. I mean, forget <laughs> trying to win a game. Forget trying to win a national championship. Wake up the echoes and all that. They covered. Uh, Greeny, they played well. Uh, and and I, I went with Heather. I'm very impressed with Marcus Freeman. I think their climb to the national championship of the Final Four is pretty steep, about like trying to climb Mount Everest on a snowy day. However, there is a chance right now. That had they been blown out, there wouldn't have been. But and they have the schedule. They have Clemson, and they have a, they have USC, which suddenly is everyone's darling after uh, one win over a nobody.
uh, over Rice. Uh, but but let, so let's get into this for a second here because if Ohio State's offense, Sacho, winds up being this season what we think it's going to be, which is to say if they do score 50 points a game every week or most weeks after this, then this Notre Dame game, when it's all said and done, I think might wind up looking pretty good for them. It absolutely will. Ohio State will, Ohio State was the number one offense last year in points and in total yards. They're going to be most likely the number one offense again this year. Notre Dame, that looked like an NFL defense. I mean, they were playing sound football. That's what you do. You talk about Patrick Mahomes have two high safeties. Like, they made, they made Ohio State work for every single thing that they got. You saw a change of game plan toward the second half. A lot more running, a lot more stretch plays. And so, for me, Notre Dame really came out. Yes, they lost. But we're not going to forget about them. They have an opportunity in the middle of the season. We talked about Clemson, North Carolina, and at the end of the season with USC to still make a playoff run. All right. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.